welcome to another episode of Book Break. Do you have your tea at the ready? Do you though? As promised, this week on Book Break is a special Man Booker Prize episode. I hate to speak for the whole nation, but I'm confident in saying that the Man Booker Prize is one of Britain's most well-loved literary prizes. Past long list, short list, and winners have gone on to be household favourites, whether that be in its original format or, I don't know, adapted into some of the most famous films of all time. This prize has either introduced us to or underlined some of the best literary minds of our time. And that means everybody in the Pan Mac office was ecstatic, furiously happy to see two books on the short list this year. I'm going to be interviewing both of the authors in a second, but first, First, history lesson. Over the years, there's been a fair few Pan Macmillan titles on the long list, short list, and even winners. They're a squad that's steadily growing, and we're really excited to welcome Hanya and Sanjeev into that fold. The Man Booker Prize has started in 1969 and is now in its 47th year. We're in the swing of things now, pretty elderly. One of the big objectives of the Man Booker Prize is to encourage the widest possible readership of the best in literary fiction. The prize itself is judged every year not by a stuffy contingent of academic masterminds, but by literary critics, by actors, by broadcasters, by comics, by poets, cool people that we trust. As Graham Swift said about the Man Booker Prize in 1996, prizes don't make writers and writers don't write for literary prizes. But in the now glut of literary awards now on offer, the Booker remains special. It's the one which, if we're really honest, we most covered. At 736 pages, a little life is anything but little, but it's not the longest. The longest book in Man Booker history was The Luminaries at 832 pages. The shortest was Penelope Fitzgerald at 132 pages. Showing that it's not the size of the dog in the fight, it's the size of the fight in the dog. I trust the Man Booker list because these judges are feisty, these judges are fussy, and they're not easily pleased. In fact, in 1975, just two of the 83 titles submitted made it to the short list. Two. Also, if you're interested in Booktube, the Man Booker Prize have picked five Booktubers to head up the Man Booker Prize vloggers. I'm one of them, and you can click the playlist here to find out more about our opinions on the whole of the long list. Emotions always run high about this prize, and in fact, in 1977, one of my favourite poets of all time, Philip Larkin, Hala, Coventry Homies, what what? Never again. <laughs> chaired the panel and threatened to jump out of the window if his choice of winner didn't win. Thankfully, it did. Off with the learning, on with the meet and greet. First, I met Hanya of A Little Life. This book deserves a partnership with Kleenex. The amount of people in the office have said that they've cried throughout this book is astonishing. That in itself is a tribute to how well Hanya really connects us with these characters. Do you want to meet them woman behind the tears? Thought so. So, Hanya, yes. thanks for coming into the offices. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> are you bored of all the man booker questions yet or are you still high off the adrenaline? No, because it's, it was so unexpected and it was so extraordinary. This is uh, the, the prize that I grew up following. Yeah. And so to be in the long list is is was is, is a thrill. Your book is, I think, the longest on the long list. I think it? it might. Be. I think it probably yeah, is the I longest. Think it is. So, do you prefer reading an ebook or in physical? Because I know that a lot of people are reading this in ebook because of the length. Yes, it's true. Um, mm -hmm. I. I've never read an ebook, and in fact, I don't have a cell phone, so I'm <laughs> really technologically um, inept. I have an iPod Touch, wow. and I just I love holding the physical book. I love smelling it. Mm. I love I love the sensation of turning a page. And in fact, whenever I travel, and I travel a lot for work, mm. I always take a big stack of galleys and I just sort of leave them behind, like droppings. Yeah, in the place I go. <laughs> it's like over finish. the shoulder, yeah, like so. Yeah, like, okay, exactly, okay. exactly. One of my colleagues in the office was yeah. asking me who you'd pick to um, play the characters in the book if it was a film. Um, is that I? Because I know you use a lot of photos for the inspiration for the book. So I you must have quite a. Okay, well, I would love to have um, uh, Michael Fassbender as Willem. Okay, I can see that. Yeah, and Christian Bale as Jude. Oh. Not because I imagine I'm that's how he looked, but I think he's a brilliant actor. Yeah. Um, and David Stradern as um, as Harold. That's that as far as I've gotten. Amazing. Yeah. With your book, it's set in America. Yes. Um, how do you feel about so many American books being on the Man Booker? You know, I mean, it's. I, I know that it's a, it's a sort of a controversial subject here. Yeah. I think it's really wonderful that it was opened up mm -hmm. to Americans, and um, you know, I think that I, I don't think it's necessarily indicative of anything. I think that last year had fewer Americans, even though it was the first yeah. year. This year has a few more, um, but I don't think it means that you know 
I certainly don't think it's an American dominated list. Yeah. As an American, I don't think yeah. that. Yeah, no, <laughs> definitely. And I think also when there is any kind of certain sway that doesn't repeat itself, yeah. um, I feel like that is, that is a symbol of the judges doing a really good job. Right. Because it means right. they're really, they're blind right. to right. everything right. else. They're just like, good writing. Yeah, exactly. That is exactly. my only, that's my bottom line. Yeah, and we're a much bigger country, so it is, it doesn't make I sense. I mean, there are more people. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. seems fair. That's just math. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming into Thank the you office. So much. I'll let you get back to this big stack of books over there for you. So I know you've been putting it off. You want to keep chatting, but I'm going to put a pen Thank in Thank you so much. <laughs> yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll sign more for you. Will you? Yeah, okay, yeah, 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 that's fine. Good. Just teach that. me. Wasn't she brilliant? Next on the list, I met Sanjeev. He let me call him Sunny. So, Sunny, today's the day. Shortlist has been announced. How do you feel? No, I feel wonderful. It's on great. a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate the excitement? Oh, it's, it's at 10. 10? It's, it's a strong 10. Wasn't Sam Rushdie one of the first books you read? Midnight's Children. And he's on the front of your cover. Yeah, you're at the song. <laughs> Saying that your book's good. <laughs> Yes, Midnight Children. It was the first novel I read, so for um, Salman Rushdie to sort of give an endorsement to to my work, it's it's one of something quite beautifully full circle about it. I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> something like, very centric. Is there anything about the book that you think people won't notice? Is there anything you want people to? What do you want people to take away from it? If there's one thing that I suppose, or not, if there's one of the things that. I heard, uh, and I continue to hear quite a lot about migrants who come to England, is that they tend to, to be seen through one lens or through the same way that they're, this, they're, that they're a, a homogenised mass. I'd hope that the book shows that actually even within that um, grouping of migrants there's lots of hierarchies and layers and people, you know, and they, they, and they arrive in England with, with you know, vastly different histories and difficulties and they have different aims and desires once they get here we can't really just put one single label on any of them. Yeah and I suppose because you've spent so much time with the characters you just kind of want people to meet the characters really. Yeah I'd <laughs> love the whole to. Point. I mean there's four main characters in the book and I do over the course of writing novel. It's amazing while I was writing the novel the they felt very much like characters but characters. Yeah. But it's only after I've finished the novel and the more distance I get from the book, the more real they seem, and the more That's I interesting. Sort of, yeah, and the more I sort <laughs> they come of, to life after you finish the book. It feels like once I've finished meddling with them and getting them to do what I want them to do, it's only afterwards that they seem to um, sort of spring to life for me. Yeah, and kind of have always been that way rather than something that you created. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it all kicks off from here. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure your family are really excited. Oh, they're over the moon. It's, uh, it's, it's, <laughs> Hitting the roof. It, yeah, it's an exceptional <laughs> moment for. Uh, them all and everyone's yeah, very happy. It's, 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 it's a wonderful honour. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about the Man Booker Prize, meeting two of our shortlisted authors, and do let us know in the comments below which Man Booker books you've read and which ones you plan to read. If anybody would like to advise me on where to put my money, I really need to win some donut money. Thanks for watching Book Break. If you'd like to see more, you can click here. If you would like to subscribe, you'll hear about new ones, and we'll see you in our next one.